G'day guys, it's Trav here from Neighbourhood. Are you wanting to keep track of all your customer interactions as they progress through your journey with you? This is where creating custom pipelines and statuses comes into play, allowing you to define business processes while using proactive automation. Now as a heads up, this applies to Service Hub starter and higher tiers to utilize these features. If you're keen on more practical support inside HubSpot, Neighbourhood does offer a comprehensive, easy to follow course, so you're making the most out of your HubSpot investment. It even comes with a money back guarantee. To find out more, check out the link in the description below. And if you wanna take your learning offline though, we'll include a free downloadable PDF of this how-to in the description below as well. Okay, well, let's get stuck into uh, customizing our ticket pipeline and statuses along the way. Now, if you're familiar with deal pipelines and using the deals or the sales area inside HubSpot, you might be unlucky because it's pretty much the same thing, obviously, but we're using tickets in this instance as well. So uh, what we're going to do in this uh, portal that we've got, this is our test portal that we have full of dummy data uh, with a, a lot of things in there that don't really make too much sense. But uh, what we'll do in this instance is we'll take you through uh, how to customize these stages in a ticket pipeline. Uh, creating new ticket pipelines as well, and then updating specific statuses for that as well. Now, for this, uh, what you wanna do is, uh, hopefully you're familiar with the ticket pipeline, so you click on service and go over to tickets here. This will take you into uh, your ticket pipeline, and you've obviously got, uh, whether you're familiar with it or if you've got pro and above, you've got some different types of uh, pipelines at the top here as well. Now, uh, here's a little did you know, if at any point, no matter where you are inside HubSpot, the cog button will always take you to the settings of where you are at that specific time. So it's a dynamic settings cog button. So for example, we're in the ticket pipeline. If we click on the cog area, it's gonna take us to the settings of that ticket area because we're on there. Cool, when I found that out, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So in this here, we wanna go over to pipelines uh, and this is where we manage uh, the pipeline stages, but also if we wanna create different type of pipelines. Now you might wanna create different type of pipelines if you've got different type of ticket, uh, ticket processes specifically internally. Uh, let's just say for e-commerce, you've got uh, you know, uh, uh, refunds or returns. You might also have uh, specific shipping, uh, you know, but different types of processes. That's how it should be sort of laid out in that instance. So here we can sort of see that this was the HSHT, HubSpot How To Test Support uh, Pipeline. We can see that there's four stages here, opened or closed, and then the update status properties that we've got here. So to create a new ticket pipeline, you wanna click on select a pipeline and click on this here. And underneath here, you'll set, select on create a pipeline. So this one here, uh, what we wanna do is we wanna just wanna go uh, HubSpot How To, ticket pipeline um, example. I'm getting creative here, people. So uh, what that will do, it will pop open a completely new uh, a completely new pipeline. If we go over here to service and tickets, um, and then we go through to the drop down, we should see it. Um, there we go. Um, we should see that's our brand new one that we just created just then. Clicking on the cog, because that'll take us back to the settings of the ticket area. We're gonna go back to the pipeline area that we've got here. So, now what you wanna try and do here is uh, really sort of work through what the process is the ticketing is going to uh, be used for. In this instance, we've got new, awaiting contact, waiting on us, and closed. In this instance, uh, stereotypical, uh, a new ticket would come through, it would pop into the new stage where obviously we can create some specific automations and whatnot to go through to notify the right people, maybe the Slack channel. Then we go waiting on contact and then waiting on us. So for example, the ticket would drop into new, we would go through, we would read the ticket and then we would respond back to that person with the necessary information to help them solve their problem. Then we would move the ticket into waiting on contact. Uh, then if they come back to us, what we can do is use some automation that will move the ticket automatically in waiting on us and then we can go back and forth, back and forth until the ticket is closed. Should you have a, you know, a different pipeline where you might wanna get support from dev or you might wanna get support from a different type of person, it's just a different stage, we can click on add a status and we can just click on here going uh, test. I'm just gonna use test one, super creative, and this will add another one. And the idea is, is to try to be as minimalistic as possible, try not to add too many steps. Remember tickets can go back and forth, back and forth as well. But what, what we want to do is have a clear idea of where that person is specifically in that process, whether it's them or us that need to actually make that next step so that you're giving the best services possible. 
Down the left hand side here is open or closed. Um, obviously open means that uh, it's still an issue and you still have to attend to it. Closed means that it's absolutely closed. So I think that kind of makes sense, hopefully. If not, hit the, hit the comments below and we can uh, let you know. Then we've got the update status properties. Uh, this one's pretty good depending on your type of business and you can collect specific information about the ticket purpose uh, that uh, the person is supporting. For example, if we click on this edit properties here, we can see that these are all of the ticket properties that uh, come straight out of the box with HubSpot. Uh, so we can click on um, you know, resolution, category, priority, any of that sort of stuff. And if you've got pro, service pro and above, you can actually make them required. Therefore, the ticket won't move to the next stage until something is entered into that actual uh, status as well, or the property itself. Try to think about some information that you wanna collect depending on the types of your business because you can create custom properties for here and insert those as well that will help you give context. And there's a, a number of different property types that you can do, drop down selects, tick boxes, date properties and things like that, that you can go through. The idea is, is that you wanna collect necessary information to help you better your service, but also help give context to the team and also people uh, for your customers as well. So uh, you might wanna do a file upload, you might wanna go through um, and have a date where it suggested uh, close date for the ticket as well. But you might wanna do some something really cool where it's a drop down select where you might have a dev support and you might wanna click on that, um, put all the devs in there click on who it is and then create necessary automation to notify the dev of the necessary information in the ticket. I mean, the world's your oyster when it comes to all of this sort of stuff. And this is the great thing about HubSpot is that you can customize it however you want, but this is where you go ahead and do it. I will say anything from above pro and enterprise for service, using this required tick from a business owner or a manager standpoint really helps you collect that information and ensure that you collect that information because sometimes when people are busy, they'll move the ticket across and they'll just get on, but it's asking that information. This will make sure that when the ticket is moved to the stage, it cannot progress until that information is being collected, which just helps the process, uh, helps you tick a lot of the boxes in regards to that process as well. So we can click on next here. So we've gone uh, resolution. This again is just an example. We might just uh, click on all of these as uh, required. We wanna click on this one. Here as well. Uh, we've got some automation uh, areas. Uh, so here is, is that you can go and do some out of the box automations where you can click on it uh, with an email sent to a customer. You can use this edit action to go ahead and move the ticket to waiting on contact. And again, if the customer replies, go back to waiting on us. I highly suggest that you do this if this is what you're using it for, uh, only because uh, um, that's automated and when, when we get humans involved, there's a potential a higher chance for, for failure or potential oversight as well. So my recommendation, if you're using it for this instance, uh, definitely use these automation, but if you uh, wanna use automations as well or try your luck, uh, go to the uh, workflows area and you can start to customize the automations when deals, uh, sorry, when tickets hit specific stages. Again, this is just like deal stages, but just we're using it for ticketing in this instance as well. Slightly different as well. So if we go up to sales, uh, no, we go to ticket, I've got deals on my mind. If we go to uh, service and tickets, uh, we can go through here, and this is the example pipeline. I'm just gonna quickly create a ticket in this instance so we can show you the uh, required fields. So HubSpot how to test, um, and we're just gonna create this one here in this instance. Should show us. All right, let's just try our hand at that moving the deal to the new stage of the new pipeline. And then it's gonna have some required statuses that we need to update. So we're just gonna move this to the actual pipeline that we created and we're gonna move it to the new. And then all of a sudden now it's popping up and asking for this information prior to moving into this stage. You'll notice that the little asterisk there means that it's required, it means that this is grayed out. I can't click this. I have to answer all these answers. So the resolution is I mean, category might be product issue uh, and it might be a feature request. And then in this sense, priority is medium. So now because I've entered in the properties or the status updates, I can go ahead and click on save. And therefore, when we go over to tickets now, it will allow it to be there. Well, there you have it. You now know how to keep track and manage customer interactions using tickets in HubSpot. Now, if you're wanting to make the most out of your HubSpot investment, Neighborhood does offer a step-by-step -step course covering marketing, sales, service, CMS Hub in depth, ensuring you and your team are best serving your customers while developing efficient internal processes. We'll include a link for this in the description below. But if you're after a PDF version for this for later on, or you're passing it into a made of need, 
we'll include a link in the description as well. If you've gained value from this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date on all of the HubSpot content we create. Well, that's it from me. Happy HubSpotting.